Welcome you to the museum of uh, Jufre and Albreda. This is the slave museum we have. Uh, before we go inside, uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about the statues. You all know that in Africa here, there was a time when Africans, we used to live in round hot, which are roofed with elephant grass touch house. So mostly when these Portuguese people realize most of the people in the village are hiding themselves, uh, they are no more getting enough slaves as they want. What they do, they come with petrols uh, at night when people are sleeping. They will burn their houses. You see, this is uh, how these people are captured, uh, a father. A husband is trying to help a wife with the baby. Now, you see, mostly the saddest thing in Europe, why most of our black people are lost in Europe, you have to know in the certain condition, when such a people like this are taken, when they go, they sell the husband to America, they sell the wife in Brazil, they can take the child in Europe. You see, this is why those black people, uh, we call them diasporas. Diasporas are people who don't actually know if in their sixth night or their seventh generation, they are lost people. The best thing they can do, a challenge to look out to where they come from Africa, is to do the DNA blood test now in Europe. This is what most black people are doing to know where they come from in Africa. Uh, on the wall you can see those statues also, or those paintings you can see. Uh, people like that, uh, when they captured from the village or from far from the village about like two three kilometers i believe when you travel in fact from the ferry point very rare you see albert and jufre is one of the luckiest village in the gambia if you look the settlement of albert and jufre no village has settled exactly on the side of the riverside like Albreda and Jufre. Why they do that? Because at that time, people were running away from the big shy because of that island has affected a lot in Africa here. So mostly people go and hide themselves about 15, 20 kilometers in the jungle. That's why even in the Gambia, still now if you posted some teachers in other village, they don't want to go because it's off the road. You see, so when they come from the island, when they capture the people away from like three, four miles, uh, children like that cannot walk at that uh, long distance with these heavy rackles and chains. Mostly when you collapse, they just tear out this from you and vultures will feed on you. You see, this is why we put this to show people. The building itself was built in 1840. It's an English warehouse. All these fire bricks and stones you see were transported from Bristol and Liverpool. When they take slates from Africa, when they're coming, they don't want to empty their ships like that. They must balance them in the water. That's why they bring all these fire bricks. You cannot see this in the Gambia East. Nowadays, you have this bakery in Cumberland. They used to bake these fire blocks there. You see, but they are brought from Liverpool and Bristol in England. It's built in 1840, has an English warehouse. So, ladies and gents, what we do now, we are going inside the museum, please. When we go inside, all the risings are very fragile. They have all passed on board, so we just stand aside. And I will explain, if you cannot read or if you can want, you can take a video of it, you see. It's still now how it was built, that's how it is left. 1996. A first edition of the Root Festival in the Gambia here, which Ayajame was celebrating. It's a time we repented the building and used it as a village of Jufre Albreda Museum. All the artifacts picked from the island were original guns, chains, circle, branding, were all stuff here you will find everything and why moral and fresh you see when the english people left they give this to the two lebanese traders in the gambia here moral and fresh at a time they were doing a corporate company corporation here which they were selling groundnut here you see so now the village has taken it and it is owned by the village we use it as our ownership you welcome in the village and that building you see it is used as a children's center Buba, who is accompanying you, uh, accompanying you on the tour, was the one uh, using that building with uh, some English donors. Uh, they, 
it used to do what you call a recycling products like uh, paper massing, recycling bottles, uh, you know, giving it to the tourists or selling it to the tourists, stopping children running after the tourists, hassling them and whatsoever. But now the building is now used as a JS office now. Okay. okay. So you welcome in the museum, please. Yes, good afternoon, Mr. Karafa Jabang is the museum attendant and uh, Patrick Gomez. I believe uh, because uh, this morning I was with you uh, two hours ago, I heard you calling Mr. Diba, my brother, about the motorcycle, and he's telling you uh, some people are the poultry about YouTube anyway. You know, so these are the guests, they have just arrived, and then we start the tour at the museum here after we'll end at the island. So they are on the G's. So just want to introduce you to them. They are uh, friends of Asan. Mm -hmm. you know. yeah, channel called Nice Gambia. Yeah. They're called Nice Channel Nice Gambia. Nice. <laughs> so you all welcome in the museum here, please. You can see we start uh, with this uh, boat here that is uh, telling you coming of the European into Africa around 15th century. You see how they exploit Africa here. And uh, excuse me, please. You see, you can take that uh, on the video. This is a very interesting history. Although we'll not have a time to talk about the whole thing, but uh, putting them on the video is more important. And this is the proper map of Guinea. When I say proper map of Guinea, I mean the proper African map, you know, before colonization. This was uh, before the Berlin Conference in 14, 1945. In, uh, Germany. You can see this is a river Gambia. River Gambia is a, a very important river in West Africa. This is a, why Mali even don't have a seaport because of this river Gambia. You know the importance of river Gambia in Africa here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is why even if you are using this migration back, we start even at Nigeria, Mali. You must touch a Gambia water. You won't realize, but you touch it. It's one of the most navigable waterways traveling to find yourself in Europe. This is why Senegal is bigger than the Gambia. Many people don't know that. They think Senegalese are smarter than us. Not that. It's during the slave trade. The British were interested on the river Gambia. You see, because when you are using the river, you must pay a tax to them. And Francophone, we are following the interests of the land. This is what brings Senegal to be bigger than us three times, you see. So that's why River Gambia is very important in West Africa. And here you see the island we are visiting. Uh, this is how the island used to be before. But when the water start affecting the island, you see, after when the Europeans left this island, uh, the island was not being rebuilt again, and uh, we all know global warming, the water level is increasing. So the water starts affecting the island like that until this side, you see. Now, if you look at on this glass box, uh, when you go to the island, they are telling you how the island was being demarcated. They have even a site which is all about women's where pack aside, men's where pack aside. Why they use women's? Women's become very important and valuable slave than men's on the island because when the demand was too much at the world market, now they need more slave. They cannot get it now. Africans start hiding themselves. They start raping our women's, taking them to the island there. When they go, they will be using them. They have more babies with them. This is why also you have this half caste in Europe and whatsoever. And on that boat, you can see James Island is one of the key sites in the history of British in West Africa and first European footholding point in the Gambia for 300 years. If you look, this is why we said British are corrupt. What do they do for us, like Yaya Jame used to say, for 300 years of enslaving us when they left the Gambia? We were ruled by still a British governor, Sir John Paul, you know, Sir John Aliu. Faraman Sngate, Sir Dauda Keraba Jawara took on the 18th of February 1965 and they built us one high school and the rest were prisons. So we wouldn't say British were not corrupt, they are corrupt. And these stones you see, most of them also were found from an island called Dog Island. You see, these uh, Europeans, 
settled on an island before this island. They sailed 18 miles away from that dog island before that James Island. Now, why this dog island? Dog island used to be a very tiny island on a very small island. So, but they couldn't fit there. When it's low tide, they are always attacked by these baboons. They throw stones on them. They are not hostile to the white collar at that time in Africa. That's why they call it dog island. They decided to abandon that island and they moved 18 miles uh, so that they can discover that island. They settled there. And this is uh, the story of the island. From 1456 was started by the Portuguese people. During their arrival on the island, or during their tenure on the island, the island was, uh, there was no building. The island was there already. This is uh, natural from God, you see. And after them, Duke of Courland, Duke of Courland, they are known as Latvians uh, before the colonization. They are part of German. They build the fort on the island. You see, after Duke of Courland, then Royal Adventure took over, you see, in 1672, 1681, then the French, 1689, then William's kings were a war on the island, and the island was all bombed and destroyed, and they rebuilt it in 1702 to 1713, when the Spanish people were succeeded on the island there, you see. Now, these are the Europeans uh, enslaving us uh, on the island here. You can see how they used to uh, be very wicked with uh, their guns and the Europeans were having this. And the Africans, what do we have? Bow and arrows and spears and cutlasses. We can't fight with them, of course. They must yeah, dominate us yeah. uh, on the island. And in the West Africa here, you see, if you look uh, at this time, this is how Badly, we were very, very affected at that time, you see. This is why Africa, during the planet, we used to say Africa used to be the richest continent in the world. But why today we are poor? So we have to look at ourselves with the Africans and change the way of our life also. Sometimes, in fact, I do blame our leaders. Everybody wanted to be corrupt, you see. Now, on this glass box, you can see, all these uh, things which are collected from that island, these are uh, uh, original things. You can see the chains they were using on the island. This is what they will put in the fire when it's hot. They mark it on your arm and they stamp this. Uh, this ATI belongs to the Portuguese. This one belongs to the English. Why they do all this stamping? The slaves are in the wall market, America. Look, they want to select. Uh, they, I am the buyer now. I'm the master. I want to buy a slave. I'll say, look. What do you think you yourself, Gambians, are good for? Senegalese are good in what? Malians are good in what? That's how they buy them according to their category. They will tell you, call the slave master, oh, Malians are good in well digging. Okay, I want to buy three, four. I take them to the, my farmland, you see. Before technology, people dig wells. So they water their plantation, tobacco and sugar in America. All those are happening in America around 1492, you know, to 1490. All those things are happened before technology. So this is why they mark them with this, you know, so that they can categorize them. So this is what they use for whipping. You see, they use this to beat them, the slaves. This is why slavery is one of the main painful things. Torturing, killing, you see, wounding. This is why most slaves change their name. Why today we are talking about Kulta Kinte? It's not the a very it's not the only famous slave in the world. More people are there. They are famous than Kunta Kinte. They are strong than Kunta Kinte. But today we are talking about Kunta Kinte. He's the only slave who don't change his name to Toby in the whole world. You see, others accept to change their name because of the pain and torturing and killing. But whenever he's beaten in the plantation of uh, in America, he never change. He always tell Tomly, look. I am Kunta Kinte. I was born in 1750 in the village of Gufure in the North Bank, very close and opposite to the island called Kunta Kinte Island. You see, but when the Portuguese people come, corruptly Europeans, they first named that island Andrew Island. But today, if you look at on our history book, they call that island James Island. Why? That's why when Michael Jackson brother was here on the 6th of February 2011, Jamin Jackson, he said, look, take out the name Andrew James, is a European name, you call it Kunta Kinte Island, you see. So on that glass box, uh, 
uh, sorry, before on the glass box, if you look at this boat here, they're telling you slave trade in Senegambia. Why Senegambia? At that time, you cannot say, I'm from Senegal, you are from Gambia. We are all under one Senegambia region. So we are on the Mali Empire. This is why you have three empires in Africa, Ghana Empire, Songa Empire, and Mali Empire. But Mali Empire used to be the dominated kingdom in this empire, three empires. On this, you can see these are the guns Europeans were using before. Now, this uh, spear, I think you heard about Kelefa Sane, those who listen to Missy. Yeah, He's dead and he was buried in Baria, Jokadu Baria. This is his spear, what the Mandinka called Tambo. Kelefa Sane la Tambo legend. They take it from his graveyard at uh, Jokadu. When they buried him, they buried him with this Tambo. You see? So elderly people find out that until they got it, they brought it here. This is what uh, local people were using, bow and arrows and spears and cutlass. Europeans were using guns. So these blades, uh, the small ones, are for the cannons like that one you see there. They stop them in the cannon and fire them, you know. So this is the original force of map of Africa. If you look at here, you'll find Gambia in a very, very small dot here, you see. So this is uh, a place where they take slaves. Uh, now this is uh, America, and they take them to other African countries, uh, you see, and uh, Jamaica. This is, you started here, Virginia, Cuba, you see, Deep South, and then Florida. Coming down to Cuba, you see. So this is uh, the triangular slave trade. When you say triangular slave trade, it's like Africans uh, to America on the ship they walk, and those products will be all final items will be put on ship. They take them to Europe, and Europe will give African back to this. They make us busy on war. They start losing our golds and diamonds in Africa. You see, if you look countries like Ghana, Ghana was named as uh, Gold Coast. It is not uh, it Ghana. Name, right? It is named as uh, the original name is Ghana, but uh, the Europeans they call it as Gold Coast. It's their Gold first Coast. president when he come, he take out that name. You see, it was Gold Coast because they will come and loot all those golds and diamonds and they take it to Europe. And if you look, you see, this is uh, what the Arabs do in Africa. These are Moroccans, merchants. This is what you call the Machan, Moroccan Machans. They travel with their camels and caravans. They come through the desert and they come down to West Africa. What they do with West Africa? They bring legitimate trading. That means exchange of things. That's what you call legitimate trading. This is why we are blacksmiths. We have leather makers. We are weavers in Africa here. Now, this is what the Arabs do with the West Africans. They do trading. Now, when slaves are caught in the bush or jungle, this is how they maneuver them and they're able to persuade them to take them and one European yeah, will yeah, follow yeah, them. Yeah, That's yeah. why we put the stick. They put the sticks on them like that. You see? So if you look this, when we go to the island, funnily you'll see where this comes from. It's from the hand of Kunta Kinte. It was in a small cave on the ground. We'll go down there. It's like underground preaching, you see. So we so just trying to on, say, on yes, on the net, you see, that's what they do. So this is like a triangular, we finish with this. Yeah. So here they are showing you the statistic of the children's and men they captured in Africa here, you see. If you look this, you will see. And here they're telling you, no one will exactly tell you the exactly figure or amount between the 15th to 18th century of slaves who were captured in Africa here, West Africa here. It's the best thing to guess is between 10 to 15 million people we have been taken, you see. 10 to 15 million. Million people, you see. That is just even a guess. That's why they say no one will tell you the exactly number. You see, because don't forget about the 20 million that is thrown in the ozone. 
or in the river, those are the sick ones, the die ones, the tired ones, the lazy ones. And this, you see, this is almost like a, a very five kilometers heavy, a kilos heavy. You can see now these slaves were captured in a different place and they are very powerful actually, very strong slaves. So they don't know how to captured and maneuver them, they must have put this trap on their neck so that they can wick them for certain hours. Then they collapse, they can take this out, they can be able to stop them on like a rebellion, you see. So here, these are the African countries. These are countries like Angola, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, Gambia, you see, these are African countries. Now this is where slaves were being taken. You see, 300,000 slaves were taken to Europe, and then they take about 5 million to New York. 4.5 million, the major routes of the trade were taken to West Indies. South America, they take 5 million. You see, these 5 million were the people they just dump in the ocean for nothing. And Mexico, they take 5 million there. You see. So these are like the middle passage. When you say middle passage, slaves are ready to say now the last destination by from Africa to Europe. They are no more seeing your family. That's the last destination now. So they're putting them inside the ship and then everybody has to empty naked, you see, and the sailors will be on top. So slaves, this is why they, you call them, these people are victimized because they are not even slaves. They don't even know where they are going until they see themselves in America. That's the time they realize we are slaves because they are inside the ship. They will sail for three weeks before they landed in the soil of America and Europe. So we see those three weeks, do they normally have food to eat? They give them food on board, but uh, the food they give them is not that much sufficient food, just small food, just to keep them alive until they reach to America when their masters buy them. Depend to you now how you feed your slave now, you see. So this is how they are packed on the ship. And these are the type of ship. And these ships, this major thing, sad thing with them, they are not with engineering, but they are sailing ship. They can go direction with the wind. When the wind is favoring them, they are going to Banjul. And sometimes when the river is coming high tide, the, the tide can change and the whole ship will stop down and they all die. You see? So this is the thing. And this is the real ship. You see how slaves were packed? Very sharp. This is how they are packed. And this is real, I'm telling you people. So this is how they are packed. This is the how they are packed. And, and this, this is, is a real thing. People were packed like a servants in cotton, believe me. You can so this is the shape it. of the ship. Yeah, itself. this is the shape of the ship, exactly. This is how they do with them. Very sharp. Very sharp. Very sharp. So these are the abolitionists. When you say abolitionist trade, it is like they are telling you. I mean, hardly how to stop slavery in Africa. Now, at a time, why this was built, Fort Blaine in Barra, it is to help these six guns. This is in the state house, six gun battery. It is included in the state house. People used to visit there now, but Jamez time, he included defense within the state house. It's only the guy to us who have access to visit there. You see, you know, Jamie is corrupt sometimes, you know. <laughs> so, because when they fire these seven gun batteries at the state house, it's located at the mouth of Atlantic. They want to stop the ships coming directly from Europe, taking slaves from the Gambia River. But the captains are white, they know the River Gambia is very wide and big. That's why many people think River Gambia is a sea. It is not a sea. Now, when they fire the, the ships, they escape to the other side. They come to Barra side so that they can run away from the blood. So this is why they said, let's build Fort Blaine in 1826. It's to complement this six gun battery. You see. So when they see they fire this, you run to the other side, Barra will fire this and they met in the middle. So they stopped slavery in 1807 by Thomas Clarkson. Is the one who free a black man, slave. In fact, he didn't free it. This is just in a way of corruption, I will say. How can you enslave people for 300 years and you act like you are the abolition of the slave trade in England? You see? And then he was age of 39, uh, 49, age of 49. Covering America by long. This is the, when they discover America, is the second person of America, age of 40. In age of 74, 
age of 74 in 1839, is the second president of America. He also participated, you see. So these are people who are abolitionists. They act like abolitionists. So this is what you call the diasporas. I was mentioning diasporas are people like this. You see, that's what you call diasporas. These are the black diasporas in Europe. You see, these diasporas, they have to do DNA blood tests to know where they come from. You see, it's very pity because most of them don't know their saving generation. It's very sad. very sad. They just see themselves in Europe, America. They are stolen children. You call them stolen children from Africa. Africa. But today, you see, their ancestors cannot make it, but they make it to come. It's very important. You see, people like uh, Martin Luther King, Marcus Garvey, George Padmon, yeah, Marcus Garvey. 1945 is the first black man to board a black star line ship. He wanted to repatriate all the black people from Europe, Europe wherever Europe. you are. He was been corrupted by this white man and they killed him. And that is the hero of Africa, Bob Mali. Bob Mali. So this is the record book which they forgot on the island. These are the recaptive slaves, you call them. Okay, you see, the you can see the name of the slave, their tribe. If you look yeah. carefully, you see Mandinka, Sarawules, Jagosere, everybody. And even their age, they will tell you some yeah. slaves are 11 years, 60 years. Yes, yes. seven Four years. years. Five years. That's why we say children were not left in Africa. Everybody was captured. Africa is empty. The only people they live for us in Africa were old people. People supposed to develop us and we survive. We would have been America. Uh, they take everything. And you see, these are cow cells. They are telling you cow cells. In 18th century, 4,000 of cow cells will cost a slave. This is why these cow cells are important. 4,000 cow cells. You can see. They are telling you cow cells in 18th century. A slave cost 4,000 cow cells. This is so these are important things. You see, see it clearly, let me tell you. Hold on this for me, please. They are telling you, cow result in 18th century, a slave cost 4,000 of that. This is why most Gambians, you see them, they put this. This is a sign when something bad is coming to you, this explodes. That's why some Gambians put on this. Everything you see, there's a reason. This used to be a million in the Gambia here before in West Africa. You see? And this is very sad. You see, age of slaves in their tribe, you see? Wow, five years sad. kids were taken yeah, to the Yeah, some are four years, my brother. How weight it is? It is one kilo, or two kilos. This book about three kilos. This three kilos. It's big. It's a lot of pages. A lot of pages. Mm -hmm. Like so so some, if in a recipe. Fading away. Yeah. <laughs> some names yeah. are. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Wow. You can see some of them. Eight years, seven years, six years, two years. Mm -hmm. Six years. Six years. Six years. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's eight. Mm -hmm. So the target was mainly young gentlemen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Slaves have no rights. And there was no law to protect the slaves. Terrible. So this is why all the country has to stay free. So the royal of Nigeria. Yeah. 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 So, yes. so this is the plantation life in Brazil. This is a plantation life in Brazil. This is how they work in cotton plantation tobacco plantation, sugar plantation, and slaves are to be sold. You see? How wicked they are. Look at how a slave attending a master. Are we not all humans? For straight down. You see? You have to kneel down. And here they are telling you, uh, like a 15th day of July, 1820, uh, Toby is about 28 years old, a good house servant. Is he a servant? Because he's a black. He's selling like you are oxygen a car. So, it's a rubbish. So these are the new generation uh, black people in America, <laughs> uh, very intelligent people. These are people who are sensuous, who Bob Marley said they talk sensuous. People like Martin Luther King, people like Queen Latifah, he's a writer and an actor. 
Yeah, he's an actor and a writer. You know, these are very important people today in America. People like Oprah Winfrey, the richest black woman in the world. Oprah Winfrey, the richest black woman in the world. And he's the first black woman to go to space in America. He's the first black man to join the U.S. Coast Navy. He's the first black man to do the surgeon brain operation in America. You see? So the whole thing and the whole story we are looking is about that uh, intelligent man, actually, who knows his sister, Alex Sele, who came back here to find his uh, roots here. And Binta Kinte is the seventh generation of uh, Kunta Kinte, you can see. Uh, what can you tell me about Turu, our excursion? And, uh, Personally, what feeling do you get and yeah, what um, can you tell me a little right bit? Right now, my blood run cold because um, black people have been treated so bad. And then, um, um, what I can say here right now, um, the last word of you is um, the black power. Um, unification is the black power. And we are, all, we are calling all black people out there in America, in Europe, anywhere blacks are, blacks are from, um, the blacks are from, um, Africa, I can simply say it. Um, blacks belong, um, Africa is belong to the um, African and also Africa is belong to the black people. So we said no um, black supremacy, no white supremacy in Africa because the world we are one. So we said um, unification is the black power. So let's come together. We build our nation, Africa, especially our motherland, the Gambia.